Logan Schrader able to show in the last couple weeks that his uh, offseason surgery on his shoulder seems to finally be fully healed, has that Christmas back on his passes and able to get those completions downfield, but a little too strong on that play. So the Knights will have the ball now, second and 15. Three wide receivers out to the left side. And it'll be, still be Hoberman in the backfield joining Logan Strader. It'll be a handoff to Hoberman. He gets past one tackle, gets past, almost breaks another before he's dragged down by Alberts. Uh, the safety, number 92, Drew Heitland, also in there on the tackle for the Cohawks. That'll bring up third and 11 here at the 31-yard line of Kell. Warburg came out answering Coe's first touchdown, and I think ever since then this Warburg offense has kind of slowed down and isn't really kind of playing what they did on that drive. So that's something they kind of want to watch as the game goes on. That Coach defense has started to solidify a little bit, not giving the Knights as nearly as much freedom offensively. So we hover in the backfield again, straight old drop back over a pass. He finds Robbie Amster, but it is dropped after the great one-handed snag, but is knocked away there by, looks by number three. It was, actually, excuse me, it was number two, Bryce Alberts, in there who was able to knock the ball away for the Coax. It'll be fourth and 11. It'll be fourth and 11 here for the Knights, but they're uh, in a position they're able to go for it without giving the Coax to get a field position. So Schrader will stay out there for one at least one more play. Two wide receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Trade will take it from the gun. He looking downfield, he finds Amster. Little miscommunication from the defenders as they get crossed up a little bit. And uh, Amster will take it to the house for another night's touchdown. That'll make the score 13 to seven. Good play there, cut up field by the senior wide receiver. That was an outstanding job by Robbie Anstetter. They, like you said, there was some miscommunication between two of Coe's defenders. And Anstetter wasn't obviously going to stop, so it was a great advantage that Anstetter took. So overall, a great drive by Wartburg. Bulky onto the field again for another PAT attempt. Frerichs out there on the hold. Snap is good, hold is good, and kick is good. That'll make the score now 14-7. to So, Riley, what have we kind of seen now for a little bit of a turnaround here from the Warburg offense after a drive where they end up losing yards with the last time they had the ball? Yeah, for, well, first of all, Coe's defense, has, you have to kind of give them credit as they've kind of turned it on so far after that Warburg touchdown that they answered the Cohawk touchdown with. So, overall, Coe's defense really has started to kind of play their game a little bit and slow down the Warburg offense. However, Warburg's offense is taking advantage of Coe's miscommunications that they've had. I think the last two touchdowns that Warburg has had have been miscommunications from Coe. Like you said, the two defenders, they kind of was hoping one of them was going to do something. But uh, Anstetter did a tremendous job of finding the opening, and Schrader did a great job finding him to be open with. So overall, good work by Logan Schrader and Robbie Anstetter. Warburg offense able to capitalize on the turnover, which came on Logan Pitts' third interception of the season. So hopefully the, uh, the Knights will be hoping for another strong defensive effort and potentially another turnover as Michael Bulky will now be out to kick back off to the uh, Cohawks. Back deep to return is number uh, 19. Number 19, Demetrius Harper, and number 28, Colton Storlaw. We're looking to try and get the Cohawks in good field position start this drive. It'll be a kick off into the left or right corner is bobbled there by uh, Harper, but he's able to pick it up and take it to the 24-yard line before he's thrown down there on the tackle. Looks like number 28. We're 28, uh, Noah Dahlstrom. So Gunnar Trandall will lead the Knights defense back on the field. Uh, Josh Recker is trying to recover from the inter er, interception on the uh, last drive, looking to get this Cohawk offense going again. Go, 
He's joined in the backfield by number 28, Storla, fresh off the uh, kick return. And it'll be a handoff to Storla. He'll try to do some dance in the backfield, trying to find an opening, but nothing there as the Knights defense was ready for that run attempt as they'll drag Storla down for a one-yard loss on the play. The Warburg defense seems to be a lot more fired up on the last couple drives than they were on that first one. It seemed to come out a little stagnant, and Co was able to take advantage of it. But since then, they've kind of settled in and been ready for whatever Co Ock has been able to throw at them. The Wreckers in the backfield again. He'll drop back for a pass attempt. He's going to be looking deep, but he overthrows it just outside of the reach of number four, Trevor Heitland. And I'll bring up third and 11 here. Got to expect the Warpick defense might be bringing some pressure here now after the uh, co-op quarterback. Obvious passing down here for the Cohawks, so they'll have Elijah Phillips, uh, Iwakuma, Mitch Malloy, and Trevor Heitland out there as receivers in an attempt to try and pick up this first down on third and long. And Co will call their first time out trying to kind of reset themselves offensively. We're going to keep it right here on uh, Warburg Night Vision to kind of talk about a little bit of the personnel for the Knights. Well, kind of a fun fact about today's game is there's a lot of father-son coaching staff. So on Warburg's side, head coach Rick Willis's son, Tyler Willis, who's a senior, I believe, at Warburg, is a student coach for the Knights alongside his dad being the head coach. And then on Co's side, an assistant coach, Larry Atwater, has his son starting linebacker for Co, Mark Atwater, also playing on the team. So kind of quite a bit of family affairs going on today. But taking a look at the coaching staff for Wartburg, head coach is Rick Willis. He is assisted by Chris Winner, who is the assistant head coach, defensive coordinator, defensive backs, and head strength and conditioning coordinator. You have Matt Wheeler, who's the offensive coordinator, Patrick Tui, who's offensive line, Nathan Roach, linebackers, Drew Coy, defensive line, Mike Hatcher, running backs, Jeff Beck is receivers, Mike Dotseth is punters and kickers, Jerry Albert is a consultant, Adrian Norris is tight ends, and Scott Sewer is often assistant offensive line. On the pass attempt from Wreckers trying to pick up the first down, it'll fall just short of a diving attempt there. Looked, by, looked like number four, Trevor Heitland. And that'll bring up a fourth and long here. And a uh, punting formation comes out now for the Cohawks. And then for Co's coaching staff, they are, their head coach is Steve Staker. Assistant coaches are Larry Atwater, Tyler Staker, Jordan Atwater, Dusty Kane, Joe Peters, Quinn Schaefer, Charlie Getzinger, Kurt Kim, Ryan Crabo, Lathan Cass, and Davin Roach. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Staker and uh, assistant coach Tyler Staker might as well be in, might be another family. Tanner Tangy trying to take the ball back for the Knights, but he is hit hard by four Cohawk defenders, led by number nine, Elijah Phillips. So that'll bring up a first and ten now for the Knights at their own 37-yard line. Knights looking to score for what would be the third time in four drives. They've found some holes in this Cohawk defense and been great, done a great job taking advantage. Yeah, in last week's game against Central, Tucker Tengi had several positive drives. So overall, it was a good game by him, and we'll see if he can have those same contributions today. Uh, pistol formation, Schrader will hand it off to Domeyer. Gonna take it right through the middle and split a couple defenders before he's finally taken down by a guy we've mentioned a couple times. Number 10, Mark Atwater there on the stop for the Cohawks. It'll bring up a second and one after the nine-yard gain by the senior running back. Oh, a lot of miscommunication there on the Warburg offensive line. And a couple of players would jump there on the hard count, including number 87, Seth Pestis, who gets the flag call. And that'll bring up now second and six for Warburg. Schrader once again taking the call in from the sideline. It'll be Amstetter and Frerichs to the right of him and Robbie Amstetter to his left. Seth Pest is still in the game. They're at tight end for the Knights, and it'll be Dolmeyer again in the backfield. It'll be a play-action pass attempt, and he'll go be going deep, looking for Riley Brockway. 
But good coverage there by the Cohawk defenders as number three, uh, Rory Sedell, was back there on the coverage, a sophomore out of Solon, Iowa. And it was an overthrown pass there looking for Brockway deep. And Trader, I just kind of noticed he was kind of tapping his shoulder, so hopefully that was just him calling a play and not him signaling that his shoulder kind of hurts. But he's had two pretty long passes, so his shoulder might be a little sore. A good thing that you don't want to see is uh, backup quarterback Zach Hiller not warming up on the sideline, so got to think that Trader's doing all right. Hopefully, like you said, just calling a play. He's going to air one up looking for Robbie Amstetter on the sideline. Amstetter goes up and is unable to come down with it. Back there covering for was Giscard Filizaire, and Sedell was once again playing good coverage on the Warburg Knights receiver. So that'll bring up a fourth and six after what looked to be a promising drive after the first play. But Grant Zimmerman will now be out there to kick the ball back to the Cohawk, or a Cohawk return team. Warburg spreads out their offensive line, trying to make sure that the holes won't get filled. Two uh, Cohawk defender will get near Zimmerman, but he's able to get the kick off. The kick is fumbled there at the 20-yard line. Cohawks are able to pick it back up, but right after that, Gunnar Trannel, playing for the punt return team, is able to hit the Cohawk returner, and he's still down, but he's able to get back up under some help from his teammates. It was number 24, Colton Martin, there on the return. Always good to see players being able to, you know, pick themselves back up and get off the field. No matter who you're playing with or against, you never want to see a player get hurt. Trannell and Jansen readying this Warburg defense. Back-to-back -back drives. They've done some good work against the Coahog offense. So Coahogs will start with the ball within their own 20-yard line. Going in motion was number four, but it'll be a handoff to Lar, but he's taken down after a spin move between the pass tackle of Will Jansen. It'll go for, looks like a two yard gain, and it'll bring up second and eight now with under a minute left here in the first quarter. Wrecker still trying to get this uh, offense going after a couple unsuccessful drives over the last part of the first quarter. So Reekers will have the now take the ball now out of the gun formation with three wide receivers out there as well as a tight end. And it'll be a play action pass attempt. Looks like a wide receiver screen set up to number four, uh, Trevor Heitland. And he's gonna take it past the 30 there for the Cohawks and give them their own first down. Starting to see a little bit of life now out of this Coahawk offense as they are now the ball first and 10 at their own 32. And that's going to be the last play of the first quarter as they're going to let the clock run down and switch sides. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a two minute break here on Warburg Night Vision. You are still watching Warburg Football on Warburg Night Vision powered by Waverly Utilities. We'll be right back right after this.